Welcome back to Glory Recap. Today we are going to recap and review the war drama film called Battle for Sevastopol. In the city of Kiev in 1937, a young woman named Ludmila Pavlyuchenko or Luda is waiting for her graduation results to be accepted into a university. Luda is delighted because it turns out that she is accepted at the university and becomes the best student. Afterward, Luda and her friends plan to visit several places. Some of them want to go to a firing range, while their friend Marsha wants to go to the cinema. They decide to toss a coin, and the coin that wins turns out to be a firing range coin. The instructor gives them a rifle and five bullets, and Masha tells them to finish it quickly so that they can visit another place. Luda suddenly asks the instructor for permission to let her participate and challenge the male students. They laugh and belittle Luda, but the instructor allows her to take part in the shooting challenge. The instructor teaches her how to shoot properly, in which as a sniper she is required to remain calm. Luda is very intelligent and understands what she has to do. She immediately fires her rifle at the target. Then the instructor begins to check their shots, and he is surprised that Luda got the highest points and defeated the male students. Her friends can't believe it, but the instructor tells them all to see for themselves the results of their shots. The scene continues a few years later when the lectures have started. In the middle of the lesson, Someone comes and tells Luda to pack all her things and meet the rector. In the rector's room, it turns out there is already a Soviet army officer who is waiting for her. The officer explains the reason for his arrival, in which he got a report from the firing range instructor that Luda has a talent for shooting and defeating male students. Therefore, he wants Luda to get sniper and military training for six months, but Luda doesn't need to worry because after her training is complete, she will be allowed back to continue her studies. Luda asks if she can refuse the offer. But the officer advises her to take the opportunity because only certain people got the offer, and Luda finally decides to accept the offer. After arriving at the camp, Luda receives very harsh military training. They are all forced to carry out perfect camouflage and survive on the battlefield. In that camp, she became the most outstanding student with above average abilities which surely impressed the coach. Six months have passed and it's time for Luda to continue her studies, but suddenly an officer named Makarov comes to the training camp. He gives orders to immediately send all students who have graduated from the training to the front lines to face the Nazi troops. Although the coach initially refuses, he has no choice but to send Luda and the other students to help their country fight the Nazi invasion. A few months later, on the battlefield in September 1941 in the city of Odessa, Captain Makarov gives directions to Luda to make enemy commanders their main target. He also tells her that an enemy tank could be destroyed by shooting the driver's window three times at the same point, which would cause the fuel tank to explode. When they are waiting for the attack, suddenly the Nazi air forces begin to bombard their trenches. After the air raid ends, Luda takes her rifle and immediately aims at the enemy tank. Her shots hit the target, and then Makarov finishes the last shot which causes the enemy tank to be destroyed. Luda can see the enemy commander, but she hesitates to open fire because she has never killed before. Luda forces herself to shoot the enemy commander and she is finally able to kill her first victim. When Luda returns to the camp, she receives an award from the Major. The Major gives her a semi-automatic rifle and praises what she has done. Luda promises in front of the Soviet soldiers that she won't show the slightest mercy to the enemy and she will kill hundreds of fascist soldiers using the rifle. The Major gives orders to Makarov to take care of Luda because she is the daughter of his friend. After that, Captain Makarov advises her to always disassemble a rifle so that Luda can identify the weapon she has. When Luda asks about his wife, Makarov tells her that his wife died at the start of the war and he feels guilty for not being able to save her. In the midst of the busyness of war, Luda always tries to meet Makarov and she often hears about Makarov's experiences, one of which is his combat experience in Finland in which he managed to kill three enemies with just one shot, and the story makes Luda admire Makarov even more. The next day on the battlefield, Makarov looks for Luda. It turns out that Luda has left her position and is approaching the enemy's location. Apparently, Luda is very obsessed with being able to imitate what Makarov did by killing three soldiers in one shot. Makarov scolds Luda and tells her to return to her position. He also threatens to send her to a military court if she repeats the stupid act. In the following scenes, Luda tries to kiss Makarov, but Makarov refuses because he has promised himself that he won't fall in love during wartime. The next day, Luda looks annoyed with Makarov's attitude of refusing her love. Makarov finally gives the reasons why he can't because of the war conditions they are currently facing and because he doesn't want to lose someone he loves like before. Not long after, something unexpected happens as the German troops launch a sudden artillery attack. Makarov is thrown off by the explosion, but he is still alive and only suffers minor injuries, 
whereas Luda must be buried and suffers serious injuries. Makarov tries to save Luda and immediately evacuates her to get medical treatment. When Luda wakes up, she is very traumatized and terrified. Then a doctor named Boris tries to calm her down. You need to know that Luda and Boris almost got married before the war, but Luda was forced to cancel it because the Nazis invaded the Soviet Union and she chose to join the war. A few months later Luda has finally recovered from her injuries, but she has been disabled from her duties, so she isn't allowed to return to the battlefield. Luda goes to an officer and asks for permission to return to the battlefield, but the officer says only a doctor could give her the authority because he knew all about her condition. At the same time Soviet soldiers from the city of Odessa begin to enter the city of Sebastopol because Odessa has been captured by Nazi troops. Luda tries to greet them and is excited to see Makarov again. However, a female soldier calls her and the woman gives Makarov's rifle because it turns out that Makarov was killed. Luda then meets with Boris and asks him to sign her medical permission. Boris can't forbid her and is forced to give her permission to return to the battlefield. When she returns to the camp, she meets a new captain named Leonid who is Makarov's replacement and they will team up as snipers. On the following day, they start the mission. However, Luda's way of killing the enemy is very different from before, in which she doesn't immediately kill her enemy but tortures the enemy soldiers first. Apparently, Luda still holds a grudge over Makarov's death. Leonid who sees that immediately kills the Nazi soldier. Luda is annoyed with Leonid because she doesn't think the Nazi soldiers deserve a quick death and she wants them to feel tortured before their death. Leonid advises her that war is not just about death and revenge because there is still life to be lived for those who are still alive. As time goes by, they are always relied on for every reconnaissance mission on various battlefields. They form excellent chemistry and kill enemy soldiers without mercy. When the new year comes, they celebrate the victory because the Nazi troops failed to capture the city of Sebastopol from them. At the party, Luda introduces Boris to Leonid, and Boris tells Leonid about his relationship with Luda before the war. Shortly after, a riot breaks out at the party, and it turns out that Luda is having an argument with a male soldier. Lena tries to defend and protect Luda, so the fight between them is inevitable, and they continue to fight before finally an officer comes to stop the mess. Lena realizes that he has special feelings for Luda, and he immediately kisses her. As time goes by, Luda is finally able to forget Makarov. Besides that, her relationship with Lena is getting closer, and they are even joking with each other in the middle of their mission. One day, they both continue their mission as usual, but when they are walking among the trees, suddenly Lena steps on something. It turns out to be a mine, so they immediately run to avoid the explosion of countless mines. There are so many mines that they can't escape, and Leonid hugs Luda to save her from the blast of the mine. Leonid dies instantly because his back is crushed by a mine explosion, and he sacrifices his life for Luda. Luda tries to save Leonid and takes him to the camp to get help, but she is too late and has to face the reality that she has lost her loved one for the second time. When she wakes up, Boris is already beside her. He has disabled Luda from her duties and regrets giving her permission to return to the battlefield. Shortly after, an officer comes to see Luda. He gives orders for Luda to continue the mission even though Leonid has been killed because Nazi troops are going to carry out a massive attack on the city of Sebastopol. Luda has no choice and is forced to take a photo session to show the enemy that she is still alive because they thought that Luda had been killed by a mine explosion. Their method succeeds in luring the Nazi snipers, and they receive intelligence reports that the enemy sniper is lurking around the square. Therefore Luda will get the final duties in which she must be able to kill the deadly enemy sniper named Otto Van Singer. Luda initially refuses the mission and chooses to go home, but the officer begs her to do this mission for Leonid. After considering everything, Luda finally agrees to carry out the mission. Luda has been camouflaged among the rocks for more than 24 hours, but she doesn't find any sign of enemy presence. At the same time she feels uncomfortable in her back, and it turns out her back is still injured and bleeding. Luda is forced to come out of her hiding place to entice the enemy snipers because she can't take it any longer. Although this method is like committing suicide, Luda is able to find out the position of the Nazi sniper. Luckily the enemy's bullet only hits Luda's right chest, while Luda's shot is able to kill her enemy. However, Luda feels guilty after learning that Otto Van Singer already has a wife and she has made a woman lose her husband. Meanwhile, Boris meets an officer and asks him to immediately evacuate Luda from Sebastopol because she has been injured four times during her mission. The officer initially refuses the request because he thinks Luda is crucial to the Soviet troops, but Boris keeps persuading him and reminding him that Luda is a woman. The officer finally gives him permission to evacuate Luda as soon as possible. After almost 250 days of fighting to defend Sebastopol, the enemy troops are eventually able to capture and occupy the city. Luda promises she will plan her wedding with Boris after they get out of the city, but Boris gives her the only ticket he has, 
and says he will catch up with the next rescue boat. I don't know what happens to Boris afterwards, but he sacrifices himself for Luda. One year later, at a meeting of the student delegation of Soviet soldiers with the First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt, Eleanor greets the Soviet soldiers and asks about all the achievements they have made on the battlefield. Eleanor appreciates them, but she is very impressed when she meets Luda because she claims to be a sniper who has killed 309 enemy soldiers with a rifle. Since then, Eleanor has become friends with Luda and they always spend time together. However, Luda experiences depression and mental health issues due to the war she experienced. It's proven when Eleanor accidentally drops a frying pan, suddenly Luda is shocked and her condition worsens. After all her dedication to the Soviet Union, Luda was awarded a Medal of Honor as a national hero. Luda continues her studies and she never returns to the battlefield.